Hey guys, Lizardly here for Christmas Minis Bear With Hat. I don't know what else to call it. But look at him. If it'll focus on him. Maybe it's this guy. Mm, slow it. Nope. Nope. Oh well. You get the idea. It's Bear With a Hat on. I, I don't know why I did that. I'm so awkward. I'm just, I'm just going to go cross stitch now. That's what I'm good at. Alright, and we're back for more weird questions. Okay, so we did the superpower one. That actually was a really good question, though. Like, if you guys could have any superpower, what would you want? I, I, I still stand by the, like, I, I want to be able to turn invisible or read minds at will. <laughs> Either of those would be pretty awesome. Alright, number ten. Oh gosh, this one's long. Okay, <clears throat> The constant absorption of magic, magical moonbeams mixed with the radioactive vegetables you consumed earlier have given you the ability to resurrect the dead famous person of your choice. So which late celebrity will you bring back to life? I'm really kind of tired of this question. It's always like, who do you want to bring back to life? Or if you could have dinner with three celebrities, who would it be, living or dead? I'm just like, why does it always have to be celebrities? Like, I... I don't know. I'm just this kind of person. Like, so many people were so upset in 2020 with how many old people that passed away. And I'm just like, yeah, but think of all the younger people who passed away. Like, at least these rich old people got to live their life in a way that they were happy with because they had the money and the means to live it how they wanted to. So, no, I can't think of any celebrity that I really want to bring back to life and talk to. Like, I, I had a huge crush on Patrick Swayze, so... But I mean, what, what what is the purpose of me bringing them back to life? Is this so they can continue their career? So I can talk with them for one night and then they're dead again? Like, eh? I don't know. Number 11. Name the top five things to take with you during a zombie outbreak. All right, well, I have two katanas from Japan. I have finally brought it from my parents' house back over to here. And I have another sword that's with my dragon on the wall. So, at the very least, one of those swords is coming with me. I'm like, I'll, I'll take the small one and David can take the big one. And then maybe we'll have the other one for if we bump into a friend who needs a weapon. I don't know. Um, I'm going to get... I mean, okay, so a sword... One of my backpacks. I'm going to fill it up with water. <laughs> or as many water bottles as I can. Which I guess, actually, I guess I can only do one water bottle. And that already puts me at three, huh? Okay. Um, a can opener. And... Hmm. I, I don't know, a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> like, I have my weapon, I have a means of opening food should I find it, and I have, have a way of eating food should I find it. And then a container for water. I live in Vegas, so it doesn't happen often, but if it rains, you know, I'll be able to get more water. And if the pipes still work, I'll have access to clean water and I can just refill it. I just, like, a change of clothes would be nice. I mean, like, I, and I would be able to fit that into my backpack, but it says five things. Uh, yeah. I might bring, like, a pair of scissors or something. Like, I feel like there are things that maybe in the moment I can't think of a good use for them, but I guarantee you I could think of one later. Oh, that is my, my David text tone. I thought he was asleep. I guess he's awake in the bedroom. I don't know why I whispered that. Like, he's awake, so I don't need to be quiet. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, although I can't think of an immediate use for the scissors right now, I'm sure there would be a situation where I'd need it. You know, like if I'm caught on a fence and I cannot get out, I can't get my pants off, I could cut my pants off, you know? So a pair of scissors, probably a really good idea to bring. Um, yeah, definitely water. I'd like to bring all silverware, you know, at least a fork 
a knife and a spoon rather than just a spoon. But if I can only bring one, I think a spoon would probably be the best, especially with my can opener. Most of the things I'd get in a can opener, it, or from a can, excuse me, would probably be easiest to eat with a spoon rather than obviously a knife, no way, and a fork sometimes. If I get a lot of soup, spoon's gonna be easiest. Um, what else would be nice to have? Um, probably like batteries, maybe. Although, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would bring, I don't think I'd bring my laptop because, oh heck, I don't know. Like, are we gonna lose power? Because if we've lost power, then batteries could potentially be helpful for different things, but a lot of, I don't know. I don't know. I tried, you guys. I'll, I'll make it a little ways, maybe. <laughs> Twelve. How would you quickly dispose of a dead body in a hotel room? Are you asking for a friend? <laughs> How would I quickly dispose of a dead body in a hotel room? Um, I don't know wrap it up in the sheets, throw it down the laundry chute. <laughs> I, I have no idea, you guys. I don't have any intentions of killing someone, but if I did, it wouldn't be in a hotel where there are a lot of employees and a lot of other customers who would see it. And, you know, the, te the, the possibility of having there be blood everywhere and forcing someone to clean that up, no. <laughs> I'm not going to have someone else clean up my murder. <laughs> 13. What's the toughest decision you ever made? Ooh, what is the toughest decision I ever made? Um. Hmm. I don't know. Like, one of the things that keeps coming in my mind is when I switched my major when I was in college. I switched from being an art major to an accounting major. It, it didn't, it, it took me a year of listening to other people tell me, you know, like, oh, starving artists, starving artists, you'll never make it. And, like, that, I guess that was, that was my rebellious phase where I was like, I don't care. I love it. I want to stick with it. <laughs> and then I talked to my computer teacher from high school and I was like, ah, okay, yeah. Mr. Martinez said, don't, your main job should not be what you love because you'll start to hate it. I don't want to hate artsy fartsy stuff. I love artsy fartsy stuff. I want to keep it that way. <laughs> and I do like math though. So going into accounting has worked for me. But I will say the the year leading up to that decision was very tough on me, but I don't know. I don't know. 14. What have you forgotten? Put some good old pressure on them to remember on the spot. I really, I hate this question. I've read it so many times and it's so uninteresting to me. Like, I've forgotten it, dude. Don't, don't pressure me about something that's stupid. <sighs> 15. How many times a day do you look in the mirror? Every time I go to the bathroom, just because I walk by the mirror and I might as well look at it. It's kind of weird to just walk by. It. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I have glasses. I don't really like seeing things in my peripheral because it's, it's really fuzzy, obviously. <laughs> like, fuzzier than someone who does not have glasses. <laughs> And so if something is moving, I'd like to look at it and see it. I don't necessarily look in the mirror to like primp and obsess over myself, but yeah. Otherwise, um, I look in the mirror when I braid my hair. I look in the mirror when I brush my hair. Yeah. <laughs> Are they admiring themselves or combing over their insecurities obsessively? Oh, neither. I'm just looking at the movement. I don't know. <laughs> 16. What do you bring most to a friendship? Well, you know, little arts and crafts knickknacks that you can have around the house. <laughs> I definitely bring a lot of those to a friendship. But, um, I like to think I bring positivity. I, I try to be positive. I try to be nice. I, I, I care. I, I genuinely care about my friends, so 
when they talk, I listen. And I know I'm guilty of it, but I'll say things like, oh, I'm sorry if I'm boring you or annoying you. And I'm, personally, I'm never bored or annoyed when my friends are telling me about themselves. Whether it's, you know, something positive or if they're complaining about work, I, I it does not bother me. I think it's better to get it off your chest with a friend rather than, like, a coworker who's going to later turn around and talk trash to your other coworkers and get you fired. <laughs> I know that's not always going to be the case, but I still, I know it's, it's better to talk to someone outside of the company anyways, just because if it turns out you are in the wrong, they can be like, bruh, no, you're wrong. And if your friend tells you you're wrong, you know, you, hopefully you'll listen compared to if a coworker says it, and they're just saying that because they're friends with the coworker that I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I listen. At least I, I think I do. I don't know. <laughs> You'll know quickly whether they are capable of your quality level of friendship by what you answer. You'll also see if they're able to get themselves enough credit. Are they afraid to ask for what they need or do they see their job as giving and giving and giving in relationships? It literally says, see their job as giving and giving and giving in relationships. I, that was not me speaking incorrectly that was them you know doing a terrible job writing this stuff the huge 17 what makes you feel supported honestly people listening like I, I if I'm going through a rough patch and I start telling someone you know like oh this has happened I just need someone to sit there and listen to me and for me I know it's not always true but I feel like someone is listening if they're looking at me if if I'm talking to someone and they're staring at their phone or they're staring at the TV, I always feel like that means they're not listening to me. Mostly because I have terrible hearing. <laughs> so if I'm looking at my phone, I'm probably just not hearing what you're saying because <laughs> I have terrible hearing. And I know that isn't always true for everyone. And I know eye contact can make a lot of people uncomfortable, but eye contact goes a long way for me. Or even just not even necessarily looking me in the face, but facing me. I think that goes really far in making me feel like someone is listening to me and supporting me. Let's see. This is a beautiful question to ask. A relationship can be so tremendously enhanced when both members feel permission to name and ask for what they need to feel supported and believe that they deserve to be so. Yeah. Like, I, I know there are moments when I'll be talking with someone and I'll go and get food or I'll go and get water or they'll go and get food or go to the bathroom real quickly. That kind of stuff doesn't bother me. It's like if I'm sitting here and talking to you for like 10 minutes and the entire 10 minutes you've been on your phone, I, I don't feel like I'm being listened to. I don't feel supported. So as long as for the majority of the time, I, I – oh, heck, you know what? If someone is – looking at their their phone, for instance, if they are answering my questions in ways that make it clear they're listening, I still feel supported. I, I'm i still, not gonna lie, I'm still a little hurt just because I'm like, ah, yeah, you're great at multitasking, that's nice. I wish you would give me your full attention. You know what I mean? I don't know, maybe that's just me and I'm a brat. I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Eight weird questions to ask a girl. Let's see if just like all of the other ones, these are questions you can ask both genders and it doesn't matter. 18. If you were a student at Hogwarts, which teacher would you rather have from the choices given? Oh, God. I um, McGonagall. I'd, I'd want McGonagall. I would not want Snape, even knowing you know everything in the end he was a terrible person i'm sorry i i did not like him i'm i'm happy that ultimately you know like he made the right choice in the end but like no he was creepy and rude and the woman that he claims to love you know he freaking terrorized her son like i just that's unforgivable to me like no <laughs> if i found out you know like if david and i had a kid and we both died and I found out someone who you who had a crush on me when I was in high school was bullying my child, I would want to kill them. Like, that's just, you don't do that. The, no, 
And I don't care if that's because you're trying to protect them. That's disgusting to me. Bullying a child is wrong. And I don't like it, okay? McGonagall was always fun, though. I really liked her. And I don't really know any of the other professors. So, yeah. 19. Do you like someone? Aww. I do. I like my devoted. And he just went into the kitchen. He's probably getting breakfast. Good morning, handsome man. Love you. <laughs> I like you. This question is, do you like someone? <laughs> I said I love you first. So, you know. Go back to sleep, handsome. You're too tired. <laughs> 20. Tomorrow you have a date with someone in this room. Who would be the worst choice? There, there's only... Oh, me. I would be the worst choice. <laughs> David and I are both here. He is clearly the better choice. <laughs> Okay, seriously, you, you're so nice, you, you pay for everything, you make the plans, and I just follow along. So clearly you're the better person to go on a date with. <laughs> she is very easy to please. <laughs> Yay, food! All right, cool. <laughs> well, then maybe I'm the better date. I don't know. <laughs> 21. What would be much better if you could just change the color of it? Um. Uh. Yellow. What? No, it's an object. What would be much better if you could just change the color of it? I didn't say it was an object. It, I want to it, it's color something, yellow. and you have to change the color of it. Yellow's like, if you don't like this purple light on my lamp, you could make it a different color. I don't like yellow, so I want it to not be yellow. But that's just one. No, no. What? What in here is yellow? Nothing, because we don't much like yellow. I I don't like lime green. Yellow I can I can handle in small doses, but lime green is just disgusting to me. I hate that color so much. I do. That's gross. I do. I really do. It's so gross. Um. I don't. Like, what does it say? A food? A piece of furniture in the room? The color of food. I mean, I'll admit, it was, it, what did we have in Washington? Pesto? Pesto. That was bright green, and it looked disgusting. But it tasted amazing. Like, the color of food, it might turn me off from it, but I'll still give it a chance. And if it's good, it no longer matters. So that won't make a difference. I like the color of our couch, so I don't need to change that. Oh, the walls. I would change the color of the walls. I hate the color of the walls in this place. That, like, brown, tan, slate thing this is just... Color, that color, both of them. All of the above. All of the above. All of them. But in particular, this one. The one that had been in our bathroom, I just... Yeah. Can't stand that color. Don't like it. Mm -mm. Not a fan. No good. And look at which wall I've covered up the most. The one with the ugly paint. <laughs> 22. When was the last time you screamed at the top of your lungs? Um... When David tried to scare the... Well, no, how loud was I the yeah, other day? Loud, yeah, I was... You curled into a ball and cried. Didn't really... <laughs> okay, and then I didn't scream. And I didn't try to scare you. I okay, showed up he, I was walking out. I, I got out of the shower, so I was in a towel. I was walking to the bathroom. David came up behind me and <laughs> smacked my butt. And I did not know he was behind me. It scared the crap out of me. To the point that I started crying. Like, I, he scared me so bad. And I have a story to go with this now. So, not the day after that. But the day after that. Or was it the day after? It was the day after. Okay, so he scared me on, like, we'll say Wednesday. Thursday, I went to the doctor. And they, the nurse was checking my heart rate. And she was like, oh your heart's really fast and I was like yeah I get nervous when I go to the doctor my bad and she leaves the doctor comes in and he's like your heart rate's really fast and I was like yes I get nervous when I go to the doctor he left the nurse came back and she was like yeah we have to do an EKG on you because the doctor's like really worried about your heart rate and I was like okay sure whatever and they did the EKG and of course my results came back fine because 
by that point, I wasn't as nervous, so it wasn't as bad anyways. Like, if you're going to do something like that, you need to do it ASAP. So if I'm still having the symptoms, you can see. But whatever. That's just me, I guess. And I, you know, I eventually left after that. And I went home, and I was like, you know what? How bad was my heart rate that they were this worried about me? And I, I have a Fitbit now. So I checked it, and when I was at the doctor's office, the highest it got to was still under 110 beats per minute. So then I was like, oh, you know what? David scared the crap out of me yesterday. I wonder what my heart rate was then. Y'all, it was 130 when he scared the crap out of me. So I'm just like, I can't even imagine the, the, the heart attack the doctor himself would have if I had been at that point when I was at the hospital. Like, You burned fat. I, yes, he scared me so badly. My Fitbit showed that I burned some fat. <laughs> it's a weight loss. No, no. That is how you give me heart issues and I have a heart attack and die. Uh-uh. No good. So when was the last time I screamed at the top of my lungs? Um, I don't know. Like, I, personally, I, I don't really care about screaming on like a roller coaster that's never made it more enjoyable to me but uh, if I'm with people who obviously like you know to scream or if they're afraid I'll join them maybe then so wouldn't it you don't do you scream on roller coasters handsome mm -hmm. yeah no. do you enjoy it no. then I probably did it when we were in Disneyland mm -hmm. <laughs> I just yeah I, it does not make it more or less enjoyable for me. Or, well, no. Ultimately, it leads to me being less happy just because I start to lose my voice when I do stuff like that. <laughs> so, when did we go to Disney? December 2019? Maybe. I, 2018? Yeah, this morning. Tw this time. Was, it was the end of 2019 because it was right before I started going to Madribo. Right. Yeah. I believe you. Mm hmm <laughs> 23, what would your dream bathroom look like? A bathroom. Yeah. There'd be a lot of blue ocean-themed stuff, and it would be good. Fun. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that'd be fun, but I don't really have a dream bathroom. I only do the essentials in the bathroom, so that's not really the room I have fun in, so... I don't care enough about decorating it. I mean, like, there are cool, like, showers and tubs and stuff. Like, actually, I yeah. would like a tub that, like... You can fit into? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, I'd like I'd like a bathtub for my handsome man that is tall enough and long enough for him. Yeah, but that... Gets Alas. <laughs> That's very difficult to find. <laughs> <sighs> Twenty-four. Did you ever have a crush on your best friend's boyfriends? Um, prior to them dating, yes. But once my once my girlfriend started dating a guy I had a crush on, I that I really I'm not into that. So that was a major turn off to me. And I don't want to date one of my friend's exes. That's just gross. So yeah, but no. And that is the end of Christmas minis. What did I call it? Bear in a hat? Teddy bear with a hat? Something like that. Hat bear. No. <laughs> no. It bear. took me three hours and 27 minutes. Very, very cute. Oh, it is almost five o'clock. There is a small chance I will do a very, very simple one. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Okay, I have nothing else to add. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video.